baseball review is good for you. Big baseball review is good for you. Big baseball review is good for you. Big baseball review. <laughs> oh, Ted Hughes, you thrusty knave. Your poetry makes me want to put my head in the oven too. Hello, I'm international best-selling author Bradley Trevor Grieve. Welcome to Big Bear's Book Review. To the envious semi-literate swarm, a successful author leads a charmed life, swanning about in sumptuous salons like a corpulent demigod, hands kept smooth and supple, caressing fine parchments of rare first editions, while shapely satin rum sirens ensure a constant flow of sweet, sweet single malt. Mmm. Ah. Of course, in reality, it is nothing like that at all. More single malt, Mr. Green? Thank you. In any case, I've received Sachs cram with desperate letters from clever little girls and boys whose Christmas wish is to become published authors themselves. And that is why I prepared this simple eight point plan that worked for me is guaranteed to work for you too. Point number one, writers are first and foremost readers. So read as many good books as you can, and not just those books written by me. Point number two, live a life worth writing about. Don't regurgitate your school library. Run naked around the world and find something original to say for all our sakes. Point three, you can only improve your craft if you keep at it. So write, 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 as if depleting the world's supply of ink was your only hope of salvation. As my literary Uber agent, Big Al Zuckerman, says, you can always tell who's going to write the next big book because they are already writing it. Point four, don't pretend to be a writer, be a writer. Don't fritter away your productive hours at groovy cafes, yabbering on about your experimental novel. In fact, don't hang out with other writers at all. It can be quite demoralizing. And as Graham Greene once said, excessive association with fellow authors can be a form of masturbation. Hmm. Point five, find a great editor and beseech them to help you refine your voice. Offer to be their love slave if it helps. Editors seem to like love slaves. Point six, brace yourself for brutal rejection and harsh criticism. They are guaranteed. Indeed, they are often the first indicator of future publishing success. So fortify your loins against the critic's pointy shoes. Point seven, get on with it. Of all the challenges you will face, none are as insidious as time itself. One day, you're basking in the glow of a golden star affixed your A-plus book report on the pokey little puppy. And then BAM! Suddenly you look in the mirror and realize you've grown too big to ride an ostrich. Time, you see, is like a cat. Fickle and vindictive. And that is why the pleasurable hours vanish in a blur. While life's agonies drag so slowly across the chronological carpet. Like a crippled corgi with worms. You have to grab every second and squeeze it till it turns purple and its feathers fall off. Point eight. Last, but by no means least, you must be utterly committed to your work. To paraphrase the Nobel laureate William Faulkner, a writer's only responsibility is to their art. So you must be passionately amoral, be prepared to beg, borrow, steal, and even sell your own mother if it means you are able to continue your writing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sell my mother? How much could she possibly be worth? Well, if you take a look at this simple graph illustrating the relative value against the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the last century, you'll see mothers are at a premium when traditional markets collapse. In other words, there has never been a better time to sell your mother than right now. So get a wriggle on, sell your mother, write your book, and live the dream. And remember, literacy is sexy. Oh yeah. Big Bear's Book Review is good for you. Big Bear's Book Review is good for you. Big Bear's Book Review is good for you. Big Bear's Book Review.